Hi, I'm Kristen Duncan with the Duncan team and Keller Williams Advantage Realty in Orlando, Florida. And today I want to get down to the nitty gritty of selling your home towards the end of 2022. As I make this video, we are, the market is changing actively as we speak. There are changes daily. I can't believe actually how fast it's happening. I knew it was coming, but I didn't know it happened this fast. And I want to talk about if you're looking at selling your home in the second half of 2022, fourth quarter, there's some things you need to know. So I've done market updates, but we're gonna get a little more detailed with it today. So the first thing I want you to do is understand the real estate market and what's happening. So over the last six months, we had insanely low interest rates. I had some people with 30 years lock in close to 2.75% um, interest rate, which is just crazy. And what that did, it allowed buyers to afford a lot of house. Historic average interest rate is closer to eight, nine percent. So if you can get 2.75 percent house, you're going to be able to get a six hundred thousand dollar house compared to maybe a three hundred thousand if interest rates were to increase up to six, seven percent. It is a big deal. So what we saw in the since quarantine, um, they lowered the interest rate to keep the housing market active, to keep buyers buying, and it created a bit of a frenzy. Buyers understood they could get. Um, a lot more home for those low interest rates. Now interest rates have come up a little bit more. They are still not crazy high. They are on the low end of normal still. This is everything we're talking about is normal. So interest rates right now are closer to five and 6%. But imagine if you were a buyer pre-approved during quarantine or you know early in 2022 and your interest rate was closer to three, even 4%, and now you're at 6%, that decreases your buying power greatly. So you're able to afford less house. That is one of the things that's going on in the market right now. I do believe there's also a little bit of fear. Um, I think people, there's a fear of the unknown at the moment. So people are kind of pumping the brakes. Maybe they've been shopping, shopping, shopping um, for a house or thinking of selling. And now they're kind of waiting and seeing what's coming next. I've heard of some layoffs in the tech industry. Um, here in Orlando, Disney is not moving to Orlando as quickly as we thought. So we have a lot of buyers and sellers who are kind of just hanging back and seeing what's going on, which affects the market. That's mindset. And it's a really big deal, you know, what, what the media is saying about all of this. Another thing that's going on, we, after years of talking about low inventory, decreasing inventory, we are seeing inventory increase. And when I say inventory, I mean available homes on the market for buyers to purchase. We are seeing increases in that right now. Now at the moment, we are still in a seller's market. A healthy market in Orlando, Florida has about six months of housing inventory. So if another home was not listed, we could last for about six months. That's a healthy market. As we speak, we are still only at about one and a half months or so. So you see, we have some catching up to do, but at our lowest, we were under a month of inventory. So as you can see, we are building. And I can tell you at a, um, you know, a level just from my experience and from what my team is going through, we have gotten more calls for listings in the last two weeks than we did in the last two months. So people are starting to act. They understand that um, that, that this might be their chance to get top dollar and they're really acting on it. So that's kind of what's going on in the market. Um, so I want to talk about what to expect. If you, if you do want to sell your home, you do want to list in the second half of the year or in fourth quarter, I want you to get your mindset straight. And I've had to retrain my brain a little bit too, just even over the last 30 days again, to think about, we are not in this frenzied seller's market anymore. It is okay if we have a house that stays on the market more than seven days, more than two days. My first house I listed um, since this change has been going on was on about a week and a half. And I almost got a little panicky and I forgot for so many years, we've had houses on the market for 30, 60, 90 days. That's normal, that's okay. So just kind of prepare if you're listing your house you know, in the near future. It is okay if your house doesn't sell in seven days. Now it could, but it's not a guarantee like it was um, you know, over the last year and a half. So just adjust your mindset and keep your sanity a little around that. Um, again, what your neighbors, what your friends said six months ago probably is not going to apply as much right now. If they had 20 offers, their house flew off the market in three hours. I understand that was just not that long ago, but we're just not seeing it happen at the same rate right now. 
So patience is everything in this market. Uh, patience with buyers, they're gonna take a little bit longer to make up their mind if they do like your home. Patience in getting the offer, patience in, you know, we might have to do three or four weekends of open houses instead of one. So again, I'm doing the same thing. I'm just having to readjust a little bit and be patient with the market and remind myself this is normal. This is the market we were in for the last, you know, 10 years I was in real estate, except for the last year and a half or two years. So this is normal. Let's talk about pricing because our strategy has already had to change with the homes that we've listed in the last 30 days. So I still do not believe in underpricing your home. And I heard a quote the other day, which I think is very true. And that is, there is no such thing as underpricing. You will get offers in the market that we're in right now. If you underprice, that's going to bring it back up to value. But there is a threat of overpricing because buyers, just like you, are resetting their mindsets around the market right now. Whereas before, like for the last two years, if they saw a house on MLS or on realtor.com that had been listed for seven days, 14 days, 30 days, they were trained to scroll past that house and, and say, we've already seen that there must be something wrong with it because it's been on the market for two weeks or 30 days. And yeah, six months ago, there might've been something wrong with it because it was on the market that long or it was grossly overpriced. Right now, that's gonna become our new norm. And what we want to be careful of is not having a buyer scroll past your house repeatedly. We, we want them to stop, see it at the first impression and grab their attention in a positive way. So if you are pricing your house, let's say you have a $400,000 property and you want to price it $450,000 above, anything that's sold in the neighborhood, it's going to take more time. It's going to, um, you're going to have to price drop. Those things are okay if they're done in a, a, a timely manner and, and you don't, it doesn't happen over a, over a six month period, you might drop it $5,000. So you want to price wisely. I like to give people about a $10,000 range of where I think their house will fall. And I like to list at the high end of that range. So I am not suggesting we underprice your house just to sell it, um, you know, just, just for your patience. I do still believe, I just believe in pricing it right. I think it's going to be more important than ever so those people don't, the, buy, the potential buyers don't scroll by your house. And we have to build in price reductions. So if you do want to price your house a little higher, let's say the $400,000 house again, and you'd like to give it a shot at 425. I'm okay with that, but we have to understand that after 10 days, two weeks on the market, it has to happen pretty quickly. We do need to drop the price to a reasonable amount if you truly want to sell your home. We don't want to lose interest from those motivated buyers because the buyer pool has now shrunk. So we have to be even more aggressive about grabbing their interest and grossly overpricing a home is not the way to do that. And speaking of grabbing buyers' interests, I wanna talk about what we as agents are doing to market your property. We, I did not do this, but there were many agents that had the luxury of taking cell phone photos, throwing your house on MLS, and hoping for the best. Your house would sell over, you know, after quarantine because it was just a frenzy, it was a, a frenzy. Now that's not the case. Um, the last two houses I've listed, beautiful homes with a pool, updated, nothing wrong with the houses, new roofs, they've each gotten one offer. We have a lot of showings, a lot of open houses, and they each received one offer. Now those offers were strong, but what this tells me is we need to be, re you need to be represented as the seller or you know marketed the best possible way with every single buyer that walks in your house. Uh, professional photography, professional videos, a YouTube channel, um, professional social media marketing, networking within the realtor community locally and online, um, open houses. These are not optional anymore. This is not a market where you can just throw a picture on MLS and your house sells. So be sure your agent is not giving things up to save money. Staging is another item that is just so important. If you want to sell your house in a balanced market, a home stager is needed, especially with owner-occupied houses. We can still kind of get away with, um, with vacant homes to be virtually staged, but if this is an owner-occupied property, you need to stage. This all comes back to marketing, all comes back. We have to get more buyers in the door because that buyer pool has shrunk. 
So I hope this is helpful. I hope it's given you a little bit of insight what to expect when selling in 2022. If you are patient and you know, you can still get a great price for your house, but if you're patient, you're happy with the price you're getting for your home, this will still work out okay for you. You just cannot expect necessarily 20 offers on the home, people paying $50,000 over appraisal value. I believe those days are behind us in most instances. So thanks for watching. And if we can help you, just let us know.